AR-15 style semi-automatic rifles have been used in some of the country's worst mass shootings, such as San Bernardino, Sutherland Springs Church, and Las Vegas. They've also been one of the biggest drivers of growth for the gun industry, pushed in large part by panics after mass tragedies and fears of stricter gun laws. Here's a look at how that's played out over the past three decades. After a series of mass shootings in the early 90s, a federal raid and siege of a cult compound in Waco, Texas, ends with 86 people dead in 1993, and a stockpile of more than 100 AR-15s is found. Gun production peaks that year. The following year, Congress passes a law restricting the manufacture of various types of semi-automatic weapons, including some AR-15-style rifles, and production starts to slow. Over the next decade, a handful of companies continue to make the rifles without the banned feature. In 2004, the Clinton-era assault weapons ban expires, coinciding with the return of veterans who used the military version of the rifle in Iraq and Afghanistan. Production starts to rise again. Barack Obama is elected president in 2008. Above all, I will never forget who this victory truly belongs to. It belongs to you. And the industry sees its first massive expansion of the market, known as the Barack boom, with Democrats now controlling the House and Senate. Fear of new restrictions spurs demand and gun makers increase production. From 269,000 to 444,000 in 2008 to 692,000 in 2009. In July 2012, 12 people are killed and more than 70 are injured at a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado by James Egan Holmes. His weapons include a Smith & Wesson AR-15 style rifle. Five months later, on December 12th, Adam Lanza shoots and kills 20 children and six adults at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. He uses an AR-15 style Bushmaster in the attack, which lasts just minutes. After the massacre, President Obama calls for reinstating the assault weapons ban. Congress should restore a ban on military-style assault weapons and a 10-round limit for magazines. Fearing that AR-15-style rifles will be banned, people rush to buy them. Sales spike, and gun makers ramp up production to unprecedented levels. U.S. companies make nearly 1.9 million AR-15-style rifles in 2013. In 2015, Hillary Clinton becomes the Democratic presidential nominee. I accept your nomination for President of the United States. Manufacturing starts to climb again in anticipation of a possible Clinton victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you, it's been an honor. Following the election of Donald Trump, background checks, excluding those for permits, drop 11% in 2017 from an all-time high in 2016, according to FBI data. And manufacturing begins to slow. It's known as the Trump slump. Even after the mass shooting in February 2018, in which a gunman kills 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida with an AR-15 style weapon, sales continue to lag. Smith & Wesson says revenue from long guns plunged 50% from $179 million in 2017 to $90 million in 2018. Unlike in past years, when similar events have driven manufacturing and sales, retailers say people aren't rushing out to buy the semi-automatic rifles. They say the perceived threat of stronger regulation has faded under President Trump. You have an administration fighting to protect your Second Amendment, and we will protect your Second Amendment. 